hey what's up so this is a new series about webpack but before we get started i actually recorded the first video multiple times trying to explain what is pack what is um, core features or concepts you need to understand to start using it but remember myself when i started uh, learning webpack i had no idea what people are talking about when they starting to um, explain stuff like dependency uh, graph dependency and bundling your your javascript code and why we actually need webpack so i will try to exp and actually I, I did the same thing i made some slides explained the, the same stuff but i don't think anyone will uh, understand them so my approach in this video to show you some problems and how we can solve them with, with webpack and uh, just to keep you in, uh, just to give you a, a good picture about Webpack, Webpack is not a beginner subject, so I'm pretty sure you should be a little bit experienced in web development. And if you agree with me about these problems, I think you should learn uh, Webpack. You will uh, get some um, benefits from it. So let's just start. I will create. I'm in my desktop. I will create a file, folder called uh, Webpack uh, YouTube then I will go to it now let me open it with Visual Studio Code so this is an empty directory and let me create a structure so I will have a source folder inside of it an index.html and inside of the source I will have JavaScript, JavaScript folder and I will have main.javascript and helpers.javascript or yeah helpers.javascript uh, inside my helpers, I will have a function, for example, let's say hi. It will alert hi. And inside our main, I, will, I need to call this function from the helpers in the context of the browser, right? So I will have a, my HTML here. You can. Uh, this is emit, by the way. It's called. It's an extension called emit. You can install it in your text editor, but in Visual Studio Code, it comes. Just put the explanation mark, then enter. It will give you this code. And let's just import our script. So from JavaScript, import main. So let me run this in the browser. I have an extension called uh, live server. This one will will just. Uh, act like a static server for my HTML files or static files. So open with live server. So let me open a Chrome and uh, put it there. Put the link there. Um, we are not seeing hi alerted. So let's check our console. So say hi is not defined in our main. So a way to fix this is to import the helpers in our index.javascript uh, in our index.html before the main and this now helper or the say hi will be uh, available globally so as you can see from the console I can't put say hi and it will uh, alert hi so that's that's a way and that's how, how I actually used to develop applications when I started uh, learning but there is an issue with this imagine I mean you will have 20 files at some point what I usually used to do and because tracking where this function I mean wh wh from where this come is it's not that easy when you have 20 files so what I used to do I used to have uh, all my uh, functions in separate files for like 20 files and I will just call things from here but it's not that organized another thing that I used to do I write just single JavaScript file but I will end up with three th uh, 3000 lines uh, JavaScript. I mean, it's not readable, it's not that good. So, in other languages, we have like uh, modules. We can split our code and import stuff from other uh, places. We can actually do this in JavaScript. We have two types of modules Common JS module, this is for Node.js, and uh, ES6 module. So, let's try the common js module so you, in each file you want to export some stuff from it you will put module dot exports and you will put the thing you want to export i will export the say hi function to import it from another place you will put you'll use the require function and put the path for that so uh, starting from the current directory i'll go to the helpers 
now let's remove the helper here and only include the main JS let's see what will happen so as you can see require is not defined so the browser does not understand the common JS module system you can't it, the require function is not in the browser it's in node.js so you can't do it like this another way you might want to try it is the ES6 module so what you can do just put exports and that's it this will export this function from here to import it you will import it like th like this so it import say hi from help us this is the ES6 syntax for modular system but uh, you'll have some errors because out of the box the browser does not support that as well so in this case the webpack will solve this issue for us it will resolve these kind uh, of stuff and what this kind of stuff will be called will be called dependency because this file is importing a function from this file which means main is dependent on helpers we need to resolve helpers resolve the functions that imports from, imported from there and put them inside main so you can think about it like this and this is actually the main purpose I believe I think uh, web back actually got created for to resolve the dependency graph so by the, by default web back will build the dependency graph for your JavaScript but you can actually extend it to work for SAS for other type of files but for now let's just talk about JavaScript it will build the dependency graph which means like this so main depends on helper and after the building that dependency graph using any kind of module you are using even ES6 or common JS which only runs in the node but for using Webpack we can actually uh, use that in our front end code and after building that dependency graph it will resolve it into one file so it will put everything inside one file minified in one line and it will put it in, inside a folder called dist and what you will do in your index you will just go go for example it will create that file in the root like this and inside of it we will have main.bundle.javascript and this will have all the minified all the code combined here so you will write your code like this and it will be bundled here together and you will put this yeah I think you need to go up yeah now this dot main you will import a single file that contains all your JavaScript code this is actually very uh, very good solution in my opinion now you can have your code separated using ES6 modules everything is fine and this is actually what a uh, framework like react do so another thing that is webback will help us to do imagine I want to use uh, underscore if you don't know it very good library for manipulating objects but in my opinion you you can't just do it with JavaScript but anyway let's just now grab its CDN I want to use it what usually people do in the browser they will get a CDN for it okay this website will provide that for us we will, we will copy this and we will put it here so now everything the whole package will be imported before importing our code so now we can actually use it so let me just remove this because we don't have wood pack at the moment we can this console log underscore let's look at the browser now we can we actually have it I'm not sure why this did not work yeah because I'm importing the this JavaScript main so as you can see we should now see this is the underscore function being called we have map we have everything um, so this is a way actually to import other libraries in your front-end application but we can actually using webpack use npm and node modules npm and node modules were actually built for the backend for node.js but with webpack we can actually use it in the front-end I mean webpack is not the only solution for this but it also help us with that so we have I mean we can get so many benefits from it this one is resol resolving the dependency and bundling everything this is what bundling means I mean uh, when I, st I actually this is not the first time I'm recording this I used to talk about bundling a lot but I think this is the best way to explain it if you have a lot of files that depends on each other Webpack will bundle all of that into a single file and that will be it so yeah 
another thing we can use node modules and npm so i will install so like this npm install underscore and i will import so import for example from under score you will do something like this you will import the map function and you will use it and woodback will resolve this dependency as well it will under it's smart enough to understand that you are importing this map function from underscore from node modules it will go grab the map function and put it inside the bundle so and actually this is useful because right now we are importing the whole underscore package maybe i'm just using two functions what's the point for importing the whole library then if i'm using two functions in woodback we can actually after installing it inside the uh, node modules folder we can only import two functions and webback will get only these two functions inside our bundle which makes our javascript code at the end much less uh, comparing than comparing it with including uh, cdns like this so another thing webback can do it can compile our sas uh, files if we have sas uh, it will can actually do a lot of stuff if you see in uh, i think in a framework if in react yeah you can import your css or sas files inside your javascript like this uh, or like this you can actually do this in react uh, i will show you how we can do it in webpack so yeah webpack have a lot of features i hope this was clear uh, i hope i explained the problem in a clear way uh, i think this is a better approach than just showing you a slice and quoting the documentation because when i started learning it i have no idea what this means uh, but now after I understand the problem, I think yeah, I know why Webback is helpful mm -hmm. So yeah, in the next video we will install it. I'll show you how we can bundle these files together and uh, Yeah, thank you for now and I hope this was useful. Bye